Tech is a bi-weekly podcast exploring the intersections of technology and ministry. It is part of the podcast network sponsored by Wells, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Our show today is hosted by Martin Spriggs and Sally Draper. Welcome back to Wells Tech, everybody. This is episode 714, that's 714 in 2023. We're recording on December 8th, Friday. Um, Welcome back, everybody, to the show. I'm Martin Spriggs, show about technology and ministry and where those two intersect. And joining me live and in living color, (laughs) Sally Draper. Hey, Sally. Wearing my Christmas red. Happy to be here (laughs) at the uh, Center for Mission and Ministry. It's been a while. It has, and it's uh, a blessing to be here and to celebrate Christmas with my coworkers. Um, This is our Christmas special episode, and those of you that are Wells Tech veterans know that we usually have a special guest. And recently it's been somebody new to the CMM, to the Center for Mission and Ministry, and this year is no exception. We have Dan Numminson joining us, the Operations Manager for Congregational Services, freshly minted here at the CMM. We're (laughs) super happy to have Dan on board. We've been looking forward to somebody filling that role for quite some time. Welcome aboard, Dan. Thank you very much. Great to be here. And Merry Christmas. Yeah, um, to you guys too. So we like to pick the brains of, of the new guys uh, <laughs> to, to get a sense for what they do, and especially this position, since it's brand new, this it really is. hasn't existed before. Right. Uh, but you've got plenty of ministry experience. Why don't you give us a little bit of uh, uh, the Reader's Digest version, at least, of your, your history of work history, little known facts about you, um, what's your, Con- okay. what, what your position entails at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, again, thanks for, for having me on. This is a great, uh, great opportunity. 714, did you say? That is Episodes, just yep. You, you are 714. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> but you've been on the show before. I have, yes, back in 2008, right? Right, right? we were just early looking dance, that up. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Episode right. 19, if you want to see right. the early dance. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that was great. That was, uh, so in my, in my previous life and my work with Christian Family Solutions, I did an episode on video assisted counseling. With, with you all. Um, so glad to be back here again. I am, um, I don't know, some facts about me married. I have two kids. Uh, both of them are now uh, out of high school. So I am of that age where mm-hmm. my kids are getting older. So yeah. um, we attend Christ Alone in Thienesville. That's our, our home congregation. Uh, and we, um, I have worked for the past 20, let's see, 24 years as a mental health counselor and operations person for Christian Family Solutions. So a long time with Christian Family Solutions and let's see, last uh, just a few months ago at the end of July, right before Synod Convention, I joined the fine team here with Congregational Services um, as an operations manager. And like you said, it's a new position and it, it has not existed in the past. Um, and my my goal, my, my opportunity is to just kind of help bring some organization and coordination to all the many things that that happen and that are are being done in in congregational services so okay. that's a quick reader's digest version yeah. <laughs> did you know what congreg- congregational services did before you kind of hit the ground great question absolutely not <laughs> no no sure i'll and, come organize it <laughs> right exactly and and honestly i think that that is that has been one of my biggest surprises coming here i i've been I, I love our synod. Um, actually, a little known fact, too, is I'm on the board for the Wells Historical Institute, which I love history. I love mm-hmm. the history of our synod. Um, so I have studied the history of our synod. I've been deeply entrenched in it. So I figured, you know, I pretty much know what's happening at synod, right? Wrong. <laughs> uh, completely wrong. I was, I was blown away, shocked, really, about everything that happens within congregational services and that includes you know evangelism worship discipleship special ministries um, big national events that happen lutheran schools all of those things are encompassed under congregational services and i just had no clue i and i was a 
um, an aware Wells member, mm -hmm. um, but had no clue of yeah. everything our synod offers through congregational services, tools, resources, yeah. events, really something. You grew up in the birthplace of the Wisconsin Synod. Did too, indeed. My right? dad was a pastor at Salem in Milwaukee from 1959 till 1995, wow. and, and uh, retired in 1995. So yeah, I grew up at at Salem and lived in lived in the parsonage the there landmark and church. yeah landmark church <laughs> that you got it that's the Wells Museum now and uh, and still am connected like I mentioned on the Wells Historical Institute so. okay very good yeah. I I remember coming to Senate and having the same feeling kind of like wow and at the time I was a sim wife and it was really to my advantage to learn all this stuff for my future pastor husband right. you know so right. there are so many so many wonderful things so what do you think is unique and exciting as you survey the landscape well of ministry opportunities boy it, it, I, I will say it is a unique and exciting time in our synod um, John Hine is a director of, of congregational services, and he, if if anyone has seen presentations by John recently, you you can I mean you can take a look at at his pre last presentation at Synod Convention. I'm sure it's on Vimeo. Um, he has talked about kind of where our synod is going, just looking at statistically what's happening mm -hmm. to mainline denomination <clears throat> uh, uh, mainline denominations and our denomination. And at, at first glimpse, it looks kind of frightening. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it looks like, boy, we're like going to be in trouble, um, you know, with, with the number of congregation and number of Wells members. But I think that's also a tremendous opportunity. And I, I like that about John. And that's one of the reasons why I came on board is that there, there is, a, I think, a shift happening with our understanding of what our congregations and schools can be doing to change that trajectory that's that's going that appears to be going downward right now so that there's a neat opportunity there that that we're working on interesting what kinds of things are you seeing changing <clears throat> you know over the the next few years coming out of you know the many programs that are going on within congregational services mm -hmm. and, and across the synod how are we you know, give us a glimpse of what is what what that might look like yeah <clears throat> the way i kind of the, the way the way I'd answer that I think is in again in my in my previous world with Christian Family Solutions I, I met and, and provided counseling services for just thousands of people and the number one most important thing that that helped people in therapy was not all the different techniques and the, the magic words that, that th therapists you know people think therapists have it is just the fact of establishing a relationship with another human being. Mm -hmm. And in our culture, in our time right now, the biggest struggle is isolation and loneliness. Mm -hmm. So people will come to therapy and develop a relationship, and that ultimately is going to reduce negative symptoms just by establishing and listening to someone. Mm -hmm. I think our congregations and schools have that same tremendous opportunity right now. And a program like Everyone Outreach right, I was is, just thinking that, yep, right? that is just exactly where they point that arrow. It is looking at members developing relationships in their community, with their next door neighbors, with their family, in order to present that gospel message to people. So um, I, I think everything that Congregational Services is looking at right now, there, there is an aspect of the importance of that, of developing that relationship with people. Um, and not just pastor doing it, it's everybody doing it. Because mm -hmm. when you look at the statistics that John has shown us, it, it is not the pastor bringing in people as much it is, as it is the members bringing in their friends and their family and, and other people that they're inviting into the, into the Ark of the Church. Yeah. So that's, that's, I think, a great opportunity for us. Yeah. And that's really the only <clears throat> sustainable way to do it, and, and really that's what Christ enables us to do. You got right? it. Yeah. Yep. It's a member ministry. Right. So uh, one of the reasons that we have this podcast is to find intersections between ministry and technology. 
you haven't been on the job that long, but any sense for how technology plays a part in your work or in the work of congregational services? Well, I mean, practically speaking, it's it's an everyday occurrence. Mm-hmm. You know that that was the first thing on my day one. I get a laptop, right? Um, and I get instructions from your fine folks and in what we do with SharePoint and OneDrive and um, got my got my Zoom license and and learn Teams and all the different programs and, and software solutions that, that happen here in order to make the job functional and, mm-hmm. and be able to do what we do. Um, but when, you know, again, practically speaking, when we work in all the different areas, so evangelism, discipleship, and special ministries, and each of them has a commission and different committees that happen within each of those areas. And all of these people that, that volunteer in these commissions and committees are scattered throughout the country in, in different ministries or or, or you know, areas of, of vocation. And in order for us to meet, we have to be able to function with video. So I've probably been on, in the last four months, 35,000 video <laughs> meetings um, that happen you know, throughout the day and evening with, with all of these groups. Um, we, it would be very hard to function effectively without being able to communicate that, that well with mm-hmm. people. So we've got a good structure in place here, both with Teams and sometimes we use Zoom. Um, and that just helps us collaborate and it helps us work together. And then when, you know, when these committees work, they, they have to have a, a, an organized unified process in order to, where do we go with files? Where, how do we keep lists of names, mm-hmm. you know, securely and, and, and appropriately? Um, and that's where SharePoint can come in. And, and just all of that, that process and that structure that's in place is is excellent and that helps us and it helps all the different committees and and commissions really function well Mm -hmm. one of the things that i've noticed uh, that congregational services takes great advantage of is the web technologies of today as you're Mm -hmm. producing materials you know like foundations even everyone outreach you know that kind of stuff the way to get that material out into the hands of those people are going to use it is the web so your congregational services that net website is definitely a destination for ministry minded people with great resources right right yeah absolutely and i i think it's it's all a part of a philosophy of of making ministry uh, providing those those ready to use easy to use ministry tools and resources mm-hmm. and so that you don't have to create things from scratch on your own. Like the foundation, it is a whole host of ready-made everything, <laughs> templates and, and worship uh, um, plan activities and, and devotions and sermons and themes and um, just all there. Just download from wellscongregationalservices.net and you are ready to go. I mean, the time saving, I can imagine that some of these older pastors that are using the foundation materials now are thinking back, boy, if I would have had this when I started in ministry, <laughs> right? And this I could have changer. Right, yeah. right. But what are but what's the intention? The intention is to give those materials to pastors so that they can spend more time developing relationships with their members and mm-hmm. with people in the community. And and I think we're I think we're seeing that. And I'm I'm you know that that trend that goes this way, I'm I think we're onto something. And yeah. I think we're gonna help them back. Pray so that's exciting. So um what can people do that are watching or listening today? How can they assist in the efforts of Congregational Services and Wells? What should they pray for? How can they get involved if they're interested? That kind of thing. I, you know, honestly, what I would say, um, Sally, is take a, take a deep, hard look at, at how you can be a beacon of light in your home and in your community. And Think about your your drive-through pickup of your latte, whatever, at Starbucks, <laughs> and greeting the person that was at the window with a smile, maybe even a compliment, that reflects your love for Christ in another person's life. In those small examples, you never know when the Lord can turn those opportunities into gospel opportunities and, and times when you can share your love directly with people. Um, we, of course, are, are, are so thankful to all of the donors who help Congregational Services in so many direct ways. 
and all of the volunteers on committees and commissions that are writing devotions and they're writing programs and they're they're helping with trainings and all of those things are excellent but for all of our listeners to really come back and remember what is important in our culture and our society right now your next door neighbor is struggling with isolation and loneliness and they just want someone to listen and take take that knowledge that idea and that is one thing i think our our listeners could do that's awesome yeah. especially during holiday seasons sure. right perfect loneliness time. is at an all-time high but you have the perfect opportunity to to share that christ child yeah right. built in mm-hmm. right right, right. Dan, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. And uh, not just on the show, but uh, joining our little family at Center for Mission and Ministry. I'm and, blessed. And congregational services. So blessings on your work and look forward to working with you more. Thank you. Thank you both. Yes. Uh, thanks again to Dan for taking that time and uh, being a part of our, our merry band here. I um, want to thank all of you listeners uh, for joining us on this Christmas special. And Sally, so good to have you here for Christmas as well. Wonderful to be here in person and celebrate. Yep. Um, great reason. What are we going to do next week? Next well, time. Well, next time we are looking back at 2023. Uh, we do this as a regular year-end show, and it's kind of fun to pick out some of our favorites from the year. Looking forward to that and uh, looking forward to having all of you join us. So Merry Christmas to all of you and we'll talk to you next time.